Welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine, and today we continue talking about taxonomy. In the first video, we learned the words of the taxons, the taxons, and how to pronounce them on their meanings. Today, we continue talking about taxonomy, but this time I'm going to explain what are those taxons and what organisms we are going to find in them. Because remember, the goal is to talk about animals, but to understand animals, not just because I love animals, but to understand animals, we need to understand what counts before animals. And someday we're going to talk about evolution too, but I have to study that a little bit. Well, taxonomy is the science that classifies all organisms. It was invented in the 1700s, but it continues evolving because there are many things that are discovered every day. Like at the beginning, it was the 1700s. So the only thing that they could classify was what they could see. So basically you could see plants and animals. But then when we could see, thanks to the microscope, we could see that there were smaller uh, organisms. So we call them microorganisms because we see them through the microscope. Are tiny. And so people were continued classifying. For example, when I studied this like 20 years ago, there were five kingdoms only. Have you studied this? Did you study the new names and everything? Like the highest rank when I was studying was kingdom. But no, there's a higher rank and it's domain. So, and there are more kingdoms. And that's why we are learning together. So first, all we could see was plants and animals. But you could tell that they were different. So we would classify them into different kingdoms. It's just a name that we give them. In order to have just one name for everything and for every species that exists, the names are given in Latin. And all the taxons, starting with domain, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species are all in Latin. But in every language, we kind of make it, make our own version. But there's just one name for one organism. So how does the taxonomy work? For example, I have this orange and I can see that this is a living thing, but I am a living thing, obviously of a different kind. So I would separate myself from the orange. So I am in one kingdom, the kingdom Animalia. In English, it's animals. And this, it's in a different kingdom, planting. I don't know, it's Latin. And vegetables, they are all a different kingdom. So when we talk about the taxon kingdom, we are in different kingdoms. But if we go up to the taxon domain, we are in the same domain. The cells that compose this orange are very similar to the cells that compose my body. Similar in what sense? In the sense that, that we are both eukaryotes, that our cells have a nucleus, what we have studied when we studied the cell. So in that taxon, we are the same. But if we go down the kingdom, well, this is a vegetable, I'm an animal. Well, I'm not an animal, but okay, i inside that kingdom, biologically speaking. But what if I take this apple? Well, this is not an apple, it's just a candle. And so there's no way we can classify this because it's not a living thing. So let's live it. But what if I take this banana? I could say that they're both in the same kingdom. So their taxon is the same. But what if I go down? They don't look so similar. Maybe they are not from the same family. So in the taxon family, they will be from different families because they, I don't think they are very related just by looking at them. That is because this is the way people started classifying things by the way they look. Later, they could see the cells and the genes, and that's why taxonomy changes so much, because once we got to see the genes, 
we could actually tell how related were two organisms. But what about this tangerine? If I take this tangerine and I put it next to the orange, oh, I could see that they are alike, but they are not the same. So probably, I really don't know, but I'm going to look it up later. The orange and the tangerine are from the same family, but maybe they are from a different genus and definitely a different species. But what happens with the other part? We are only in the eukaryotic domain. What about the other two domains? Nowadays, there are three domains that are recognized. The first domain is bacteria. The second is archaea. And the third domain is eukarya. So bacteria and archaea are what make up most of our planet. Their numbers are counted in billions of species, but they are prokaryotes, meaning that they are very simple organisms and one cell is one organism, always. Eukarya, in the eukarya, it means eukaryote. So here we find eukaryotes, like us, like vegetables, like fungi, and any other living thing that is not bacteria or archaea. Archaea is just something that before was also in the part of bacteria. But you remember that I learned just five kingdoms? There were only five kingdoms. Protista, Monera, Animalia, Plantae, and Fungi. That was it. But that has changed a little, just because now we have three domains and up to seven kingdoms. Well, some don't like the kingdom, but whatever, we like the word kingdom and we still learn with it. Because now there are seven kingdoms. Bacteria, Archaea, who are prokaryotes, and then in the eukaryote, remember before we started with protista? No. Now there are protozoa, chromesta, plantae, fungi, and animalia. But let me move so I can explain it better. So in the world of taxonomy, we classify living things and they are classified currently into domains as the highest rank. And there are three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya, eukaryotes. But let's say that bacteria are bacteria, in English also bacteria, archaea are some, we call them archaeobacteria, archaea are archaea, similar to bacteria, and eukarya, eukaryotes. And if we move to the next level, we will find the kingdoms. Bacteria is just bacteria, archaea is just archaea, and in the eukarya domain, there are five kingdoms. But these five kingdoms are different from the ones that I studied. The kingdoms are protozoa, yeah. protozo, chromista, plantae, fungi, and animalia. This means protozoa are tiny organisms. Well, there are microorganisms too, but they are like um, the prokaryotes have a nucleus are a lot more complex and bigger really than any prokaryote. An example of this is all of what we call as amoebas. Then in the Chromista kingdom there are some kinds of algae. In the plantae, as I said, it's vegetables, fungi is fungi and animalia, it's animals. So I want to start with the simplest organisms. Which are the simplest organisms? Yes, bacteria. Why? Because their cells are very simple. And remember, just one cell is one organism. But there are tons of species, and we can also classify them using taxonomy. Well, in the past, since they were so tiny, we could just classify them as we could see them. And there were some special ways 
well, there are because we still use them, uh, special ways of staining them so we could see them and we could differentiate them. So that was the classification. But now that we have the genes, we can classify them by their genetic relationship to see how related they are genetically. So just like animals, saving the distances, bacteria come in all sizes and shapes. They are really cute. And next class, I'm gonna tell you some more about them. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, share, study, and I hope to see you soon.